All right, this is going to be a video showing off the RTV Shared Parameter Manager. I'm just going to start off by uh, showing a just a new project just we assigned to look at. Um, assuming you have your own shared parameter, uh, parameters loaded into your project. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, going to go to I'm just going to set up a blank example. So I'm going to go to share parameters and I'm going to then create a new parameter, a new parameter file just for testing. I'm going to call this a shared parameter manager test. And then I'm going to create a new group. I'm going to call this doors. And this, all these, assuming you already have your own set of groups, your own set of parameters. And for now, I'm going to call this parameter uh, test underscore uh, width. And for now, we're going to give it uh, text OK, hit OK. So now we have our shared parameters. We have one shared parameter added to it. In the project I created, I'm just going to add, just to have something there, I'm going to create a wall, and I'm going to save this file. Um, this is just to kind of help Revit um, understand that you may not have to save the file. This is just something that I'm doing uh, for testing. This, the saving step may be an extra step that's not required. But anyway, so after I have my shared parameter ready, I have my, uh, I'm assuming, uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter, so I'm going to keep going. So now if I go back to my project parameters, normally the limitation is that if you were to add a new parameter, in this case, I'm going to select the one I created. I'm going to add it to my doors. Again, it doesn't matter. All this stuff really doesn't matter. Hit OK. Text. OK. I go back to project parameters. I can see... This one, I, if I want to rename this, um, I can't. I don't have the option to rename this. And you might think that, okay, I'll have to modify the text file. If, if you modify the text file by opening the location where the file is saved, uh, let me navigate to that file. Um, if you were to open that text file, and Revit warns you, um, not to mess with this file uh, manually. If you were to find that text file, it's the one, this SMP test one that we saved out. In order to open this guy up, this is the file. You may think, okay, I want, I don't want to say test, I want to say final. I can change this and save it. That won't be a problem. Um, I'll just close this, save it. Um, you're not supposed to, if, if you look back at that, that message, it said um, that you're not supposed to edit manually at the very top of that. But now, if, if you look here, it didn't change this. If I go back to my shared parameters, I can see it was renamed here. So it does pick it up here. But once you add it to the project, um, through the project parameters, it basically bakes in the name, and there is no way to change it. So that is where the shared parameter manager comes in to, to play. And there may be other similar tools, but I don't believe there's a native way to make the change to the name. So going back to that shared parameters file, let me go back and, and rename it back to what it was. Um, I believe it was called test here. You got to be very careful. It says do not edit manually. Um, anything, the tabs, all that stuff is very important. So I'm being very careful to just edit the text. If I were to delete one too many things, it would break this file. Hit save. Okay, now let me just double check that guy. Should be back to test. Okay, perfect. So now, the way that the shared parameter manager works, and it's, uh, I'm going to go to that tab here, um, the RTV tools. Um, the setup was a little difficult. You, you need to 
install install and use some SQL Server stuff. So you may need some help with IT if, unless you know how to work with that. Um, but the way it works is you load the shared parameters into this file, into this tool, and it, because Revit can't rename it, it, it does a replace. So the first thing I'm going to do here is we'll have a few options. I can either rename the, I can either add the shared parameters manually beforehand or use the tool to add them for me. Because if we see here, there's an option to, to, to make new parameters. You can't make them back in Revit and see them here still. It's either it's it's either or. So, so for example, let me just do it all. Let me let me do what I'm saying here in Revit, just because that's more accessible. So let me close this first because it won't let me access that in the back. So I'll go back to manage shared parameters. And let's say I don't want to have test with. I want it to be called final with. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to create a new parameter. It's going to be called final width, and we'll call it just so, we'll, we'll leave it like that. I don't think it matters. I don't think Rev remembers. Text, and I'm just making sure that whatever the previous one was, whatever test width was, the final width needs to match. So I'll press OK. Now I have one that's used, one that's not used. So now I have two. I go back to my project parameters. It's not here because I didn't add it. The only one that's here is the one I added previously that's test with. So the reason why I needed to create the other one is because this this is the one that um, the shared parameter manager will use to swap for the one we don't want. So now that I have that in the um, shared parameters file, if I were to go back and open that shared parameters file, I expect to see the other one there finally. So now there's two here as expected. So now if I go back to the shared parameters tool, RVT tools launch this, the first step is to import um, from the shared parameters file. So I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to find this. And the reason why you need to make those changes beforehand is because you can't re-import. Um, it gave me an error last time. If you had to import it, you might you will have to delete it and re-add it. That's why it's... You want to do it beforehand or afterwards. Now that it's here, um, if I go back, um, now I see, um, I see the both of them. I go to the project parameters. We can see that the one that's bold is the one that's attached, that's like latched to the file, and they come. So the test width is binded to the um, the Revit file, but final width is in the shared parameters file, but it's not binded to the project. So what I want to be able to do is rename it. So I'll click on, on this one and I'll say replace binding and then I'll select test width. So what it's going to do is it's going to take test width and it's going to replace it with final width. So I hit OK. It said it was successful, completed. And then what I expect to happen now and, and and the reason why this tool is so useful is if I go back to project parameters, it's called final width. So now it's renamed correctly, and I don't have to delete it and add it again. Because the alternative, if you didn't have the tool, if I wanted to make this uh, called something else, I would have no choice but to make a new one. Um, you know, I'll call this, call this one final final, I guess. Doors. And the only way you would be able to do it is to come in, delete this one, and put this one in its place, manually updating all your locations where you had that parameter associated. Any sort of um, schedule would have to be re-added, and then all your parameters will get deleted. But, be, but this tool, and I haven't tested it out, but it's supposed to allow you to keep the data. Um, but I really intend to use this tool only for modifying our templates, so I'm not really concerned about losing data. But it's going to be really powerful. And alongside similar tools like um, this DRoots um, parameter manager, I'm going to be able to come in here and load the shared parameters, make changes to it, uh, or add duplicate stuff, and then use the shared parameter tool 
to then swap out the parameters. So it will save me a lot of time, I believe, by um, duplicating stuff. That's the idea. I haven't, I haven't used it yet, but you can. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely very, um, very happy with the tools functionality, even though it wasn't straightforward, um, and the SQL stuff was complicated. We need, I did need IT to help me install uh, the server stuff and getting the permissions to work. I kept getting errors. Um, and then what I mentioned earlier, if you need to add more. You can always add new parameters here this way. So once I start adding it this way through new, I, I can't be using one back here in Revit, the new one. I could only I should only use it this way because uh, the shared parameter manager won't see the changes to the to the shared parameter manager uh, the text file anymore. There's no refresh button, so you need to do it new through here and not use the new through the shared parameters dialog in Revit. Um, I haven't gotten much into the other uh, settings. Uh, you know, my function or the reason I'm using this is because I want to replace the prefix of our file. All right, thank you.